Hey, it's the God Awful Gospel Hour. Doing a doing a midday recording today. Yeah, we just had a men's prayer breakfast with Eric Knowles. <laughs> yeah, who is with us here? He's joining us for the Gospel Hour. Yeah, Eric, you're a veteran. You're on Vet TV. Yep, Vet TV. New special. Yep. We're gonna keep banging on that all day here. Yeah, let's talk about that. Have you ever gotten laid from being a, a military? From being in the military? Yeah. Yeah. Do you ever tell the girl, thank you for your cervix? <laughs> a couple, couple of times. Nice. Yeah. 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 Outside of that. I've gotten the... laid for being in the military, but never for being a veteran. Okay. So, yeah, it only works while you're yeah. wearing the uniform. Well, you're still married now. You could say every time you get laid at home, it's because of that. You're still milking it. I like it. that. You can keep on milking it. That's true. <laughs> it's all in the way you think about That's it. That's true. Outside of the military, what's the most dangerous job you've ever had? Outside of the military. OSHA violations, etc. Yeah, well, I worked in the oil field oh, shit. for a while. I've done that. Uh, that would probably be it. I worked in a chemical plant. Did you wrap that chain around the thing to make it go in the rig? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I was out there doing all that. Favorite thing to show housewives that say they have the hardest job in the world. Exactly. <laughs> go yeah. out here and do the, throw this chain around yeah. this thing. And I see say it. that to like feminists too. I'm like, well, the oil field's hiring. You yeah. know, you want to be equal. <laughs> yeah. Invent that's, something. that's equal pay right there. That, yeah, they'll pay you the bump same. your average way up. Yeah, you get hazard pay and everything. Yeah. Did oh. you ever have anybody from the government say, there's a meteor heading towards Earth and we need some drillers? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. No. Oh, yeah. What's the so most- Armageddon was not a document. <laughs> okay. What would you say is the most realistic depiction of the military in the movies? Um, probably the movie Jarhead. That's what. Yeah, yeah I, I hear that a lot. They're yelling at you to hydrate the whole time. Yeah, I mean some of it, most of it, like the uh, the boot camp stuff and yeah. uh, just the the way that everybody's irreverent and the way uh, that the Marines are very homoerotic. Yeah, yeah, we humped each other a lot. I mean, you have a <laughs> dry hump. I mean, come on, it's not the <laughs> Navy. You have the bit about getting a boner during. <clears throat> boot camp yeah getting ye- is that some fetish you like getting yelled at what's going on <laughs> <laughs> i mean i like i'm into that kind of stuff too but i would if i was getting yelled at at boot camp and getting ready for a life of servitude looking forward my dick would go it, i'd get free trans surgery yeah you know it'd go completely i've just out. always had a very easy boner yeah you know <laughs> so morning wood i'm sure they yell at you oh first morning thing wood morning. yeah morning is just that's every day i'm yeah. 45 it's still every day hell yeah brother. pole vault out of bed every support day support the troops yeah, yeah. <laughs> Good. I remember on the school bus, like just the bouncing on the school bus <laughs> would do it. I'd have to cover it with my trapper keeper when I get off. You get a slight vibration, boom. Yeah. Anything, yeah. I had a girlfriend that I rode the bus with, and I let her have all my old skate t-shirts. They're very thin, and she didn't wear a bra, so the oh. bouncing would make her boobs jump up and down. You dirty little oh, rascal! I get a boner in the bus. <laughs> we used to get. Uh, I has, I've told this story before, but I had a girlfriend in church, and we would hold hands like this in secret. Ah, oh, nice. And then I would get Do a boner. He's doing the... Yeah. <laughs> and then they go, everybody stand for the hymn, <laughs> for the singing. I'm like, I, oh, I didn't know. I thought we are done singing. Dude, last Sunday in church, I did that. And yeah. I, but I grabbed, I touched my wife's boob. Yeah, you yeah. get some. She loved it. Yeah, and then you have a uh, free pedestal for the hymnal. Ah, oh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You also had a uh, mention that you listened to Cypress Hill growing up. So did I. Yeah, I got paid to draw Cypress Hill graffiti logos on oh, my really? friends' books. We had the book cover. Yeah, and you can turn it inside out. It's blank. Yep. But I get paid. I mean, I got paid by not getting beat up. Oh, that's by good. the older that's kids. Good pay. <laughs> yeah, you can, it's good work if you can find it. There's the older kids that would drive me to school. They're like, I'm not going to pick you up tomorrow unless you draw Cypress Hill and EPMD and all this stuff logos. Mm. I had to copy all the logos. Stussy, you remember all that stuff? Oh yeah. I got yeah, I was good, good at just the S. <laughs> yeah, that's as far as I ever got. That's a classic. Yeah, everybody can do the yeah. S. Well, remember how hard it was to find new music back then. You know, you probably heard about Cypress Hill like I did through word of mouth or somebody, yeah. and we had to go to Target or, or no Tower to yep. find new music or read yeah. a magazine. Yeah, or something. you have to go find those yeah. the hip hop magazine or the alternative rock magazine. I remember all the kids that we thought were kind of dirty. When we were in like sixth grade, they all had the magazines that had Pearl Jam on the front of them. Yeah, I'm like who's that? I don't know. My always... kids are like my kids steal music on the internet. Yeah, you know they just download it without permission. <laughs> and I'm like, dude, I, we used to have to go to the store and yeah. steal. Yeah, you know, we had to take chances Manually. with our future. That's had to bring what... a magnet to get the strip yeah. not working and all that. That's I spent the... a summer in juvenile hall for a <laughs> Phil Collins CD. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, don't say what you're in for. You're gonna get raped. I know. Yeah. Bad taste in music, maybe, but I was thugged out. Oh, that was what the big Jinkos were for, because yeah. you could put a whole VHS in the pocket yeah. of those huge pants. My daughter gets me new music. I've subbed the workout to her because she's on iTunes. Oh yeah, she finds more new stuff. I mean, I don't have time anymore. I don't even know how to look for new music. I mean, the stuff. I don't iTunes, even care anymore. Yeah, I don't. I like the music I like. I'm 45 now. I'm that's my music. Yeah, you know, the stuff I grew up with. Oh, yeah. I'm not. I don't need to discover some new Same with beer and Who restaurants cares? it's like if i'm gonna go out yeah. and get something i'm not gonna go out on a limb anymore. i know what i'm getting <laughs> i know what i'm getting I'm tired of experimenting chicken fried <clears throat> steak most of the time my kid came down my 13 year old daughter came down into the into the kitchen with my wife and i and said have you guys ever heard this i just found this new band and she put on the smiths <laughs> morrissey <laughs> we were like so we started singing along. We knew every word. Right. And she was like, how do I you guys it. know this? It's yeah. funny when your kids think they're showing you new music. Yeah. It's your stuff. It's Stranger Things so yeah. far. Like Stranger Things plays all the 80s music and all that. Yeah. And so now all these kids are, oh, yeah. are discovering it like it's some brand new stuff. Yeah. Like that new Kate order. Bush song or whatever. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I just showed my 10-year-old son uh, Def Leppard, you know, Pour Some Sugar nice. on Me. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He was like, dude, this is like the best song ever. I'm like, I know, <laughs> right? That's another it was. graffiti I made for a girl. Was a, I didn't even know about any. I wasn't allowed to listen to any of it. I listened to Weird Al. But she was like, can you make me a picture of Def Leppard? So I just drew a leopard that couldn't hear. That was getting <laughs> bit by a bunch of little monster hearts because she said she liked the song Love Bites. Uh, I had no idea what it was. Are you serious? You just personify yeah. the whole thing? I got paid in uh, learning how to French kiss. For hey. Yeah. <laughs> Do you ever make mixtapes for girls when you were little? Uh, not for girls. I I made them for myself. I didn't even. No, I wasn't very romantic. Okay. I didn't get any uh, riz until I was. <laughs> I got one out just there now. That if I could go out and get it back, I would because I did audio of myself between all the songs. Oh but really? It was like passionate, romantic. I love you. I was like, <laughs> I need to not have. That How would you hate? So wouldn't just, you hate for that to like resurface? I'm still friends now. with her on Facebook. On Facebook, <laughs> she could, you still got she that could thing? screw me. If she wanted to, it's it's your own personal Star Wars holiday special. Any, yeah, as soon as you run for office, it's going to come yeah. back. That actually would be better than other options of things that could come back. Around. True, I'd, I would actually yeah. prefer that. <laughs> True, it's like when Kellyanne Conway had that had that video come out of her trying to do comedy. Yeah, I, oh, I didn't see that. Yeah, <clears throat> was it? I want to be ninja. Yeah, it was. It was <laughs> almost. I want to be ninja. Oh god, uh, quality. I was about yeah. to say that wasn't her, was it? <laughs> So San Diego, you lived in San Diego for how long? Uh, I think like 15 years. Yeah. yeah. I was stationed out there as a Marine. Okay. There's a lot of uh, Texas gatekeeping, Texan gatekeeping here for like, you know, I've been here since 04 and I have wife and kids, but I'm not sure what it even means to be a Texan. We've got two real Texans here yeah. besides myself. What do you, how do you qualify? What do I do? What do I got to do? Well, I don't know. But first of all, I, I want to tell you that I could tell. Yeah, you were not a real Texan. <laughs> okay, you right. can always see the transplants. Yeah. yeah, you 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 don't look it, man. Yeah, <laughs> I'm a, I guess I'm an Austinite. I don't know. So what's the question? What does it take to be a real Texan? Yeah, what like at it, what point are you a Texan? Fires? Well, you got to be born here. Okay, <laughs> you can't become a Texan. Like being the There's president. no naturalized yeah. citizen. We'll let you live here, but okay. you ain't one of us. <laughs> All right, I'm hiding behind my wife. Yeah, she can take care of me. She's my representation. So you move back here. Yeah, I moved back here uh, shortly after I won the World Series of Comedy in 2016. Nice. Because uh, part of the prize was that I won uh, work at, you know, like, I think it was like 35 different comedy clubs all over the country. Nice. So I wanted to move somewhere a little more centrally located so I could travel. Um, I like when you get rewarded with work. They do that at my places. job. Do yeah. a good job, you get to stay. Right. There was no cash prize either. <laughs> it was like this huge thing, that was the finals in Las Vegas, you know, there was all these shows and i ended up winning i'm like wait well so what did i win how much did i win they're yeah. like no you won work yeah, yeah. So feature work <laughs> okay <laughs> which is like break even yeah it's like they pay you in exposure yeah, yeah. So oh wow them. so i won the right to fly myself to wisconsin <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right and do a weekend of shows for four hundred dollars that makes <laughs> sense tell the whole crowd i would never be here if it wasn't <laughs> yeah. yeah chicken strips at the bar There's every no night. reason yeah. for anyone to go to wisconsin <laughs> except for having to go <laughs> they serve cheese curds that's the only reason i've ever been to dallas or houston is because i had to go for something i've never been for fun or like to check it out it's always like you gotta go get your passport in houston or right. there's a funeral in dallas 
what are you going to go to Houston for fun for? I feel like traffic. Right. If you like traffic, if you like uh, getting shot at. Yeah. Just love the humidity. It feels so good. Yeah. It just hugs you like a warm, wet blanket. Yep. So you've been in Austin since yesterday, and you've been here a couple times before to do the mothership. Yeah. I think this is my fifth trip to the mothership. How do you like all the uh, the woodland people that we have? We have elves everywhere now. What do you mean? The homeless. Oh, the homeless? <laughs> I don't know. It's the same in every city. Every city thinks that their homeless is uh, unique. Yeah. It is not. It's hippies with ripped stuff. To me, they look like elves. What's unique is if you see a homeless person in like a uh, a small town. Yeah. You know, yeah. with like one traffic light. Like, what are you doing here? <laughs> did, did you realize you're supposed to go to Austin? Yeah, you guys are in the big go over there. Get on the bus. I'm going to steal yeah. one of those banners from the apartments by the woods where they live that says, if you lived here, you'd be home by now, and just change it so it says, if you lived here, you'd be homeless by now. Yeah. Put it over there. <laughs> <in> the <camera>. <laughs> <laughs> Have you watched Alone, the Survivor show? No. It's, they just drop people off in the middle of nowhere. It's 10 people, uh, what, 10 months? It's 10, just, you you stay as long as you can, and the last yeah. one left, before the one, last one that doesn't tap out gets like $100,000 or yeah. half a million dollars or something like that. But I think they're told by the producers that they have to like honor the land or honor the wildlife, because every time they kill something, they're like, thank you, squirrel. <laughs> thank you for your <laughs> life. I'm so sorry. And you know, They wanna, have to be all spiritual about it. I oh, want there okay. to be like a puck. Remember Puck from Real World? Yeah. I want there to be an asshole on that show where he's like, right. fuck you, I ate you. Yeah. I'm hey, me kill meat. everything. Yeah. <laughs> I'm out here like a wolf trying to I'm only going to gonna yeah. take one bite and throw your carcass away. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to leave you. <laughs> Next week. on I mean, I bet their viewership would go up. Yeah. Next week on Alone Asshole. Puck. Yeah, can can you imagine? Everything, everyone's peanut butter. Can you imagine what their social media would look like? What like their subreddit would look like? I can't believe this person is totally being an asshole of the animals. <laughs> they you should know. make that mandatory for assholes. Just yeah. like. <laughs> or people that I don't know criminals or something. It could be like a punishment, and then we all get to watch. Yeah, the uh, what is it? Grand Royal Royal Battle Royale. Battle Royale. Yeah, yeah. Hunger Games. Our Hunger yeah. Games. Oh well, now we're getting too serious. We yeah. were sitting <laughs> out in the back. I mean, they don't they don't have to. Wouldn't die. it be fun to watch them murder <laughs> each other? Hell yeah, the most dangerous game. <laughs> <laughs> ha ha. We were sitting out in the backyard drinking and uh, during I'm, COVID. Oh, know. I mean unalive. Yeah, for my get TikTok unalived. People. Yeah, yeah <laughs> get sorry. unalived. Yeah, gotta use cutie speech. Oh no. Yeah. So we were drinking in the backyard during COVID and we heard a bunch of uh, coyotes, and I was trying to get my neighbor to play along with. Uh, he doesn't understand comedy, and I was trying to joke around with him and stuff. And I was like, "Oh, you know, coyotes they they eat people." For, they eat the asshole first. They go for the <laughs> soft parts. And he was like, oh, I guess they'll come for you first and we're safe. We can run. Nice. Because I'm the asshole. <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. That yeah. sounds true, though. Good for somebody who doesn't do believe they, in comedy. Do they really eat the butthole first? I mean, they, they always go for like the, the stomach and yeah. like the stuff they can get in. It's not, not like they're going for, it's you know, point. they probably yeah, the end up first. getting the crotch area. Yeah. yeah. Also, that area is probably the easiest one to grab a hold of when it's trying to run away. Don't, right. don't kink shame the coyotes. They yeah. like to eat ass. That's all right. But they're about balls high. <laughs> <laughs> that's, the, that's the most uh, tender bits. That's what the chimps go for whenever they mutilate you is they go for the soft, fleshy bits. So you're a Texan. You'd say you're from southeast Texas? Yeah, near the uh, Beaumont area. Okay. We're going to Port Aransas next week. And I went down there for uh, hurricane relief to Victoria. Okay. They got blasted. And we we fixed yeah. up all their intersections with flashing lights. And we had to put up stop signs and everything. Nice. We get we get hit by Thank a lot. Thank you for of, your service. Oh, no, you. <laughs> <laughs> that was a, I, one I week. Didn't do yeah, that was more helpful than anything <laughs> I did in the Marines. And we had people stopping and honking and saying thank you, and then we had other people stopping and honking saying get the fuck out of the way. Right. <laughs> <laughs> this place was fine without traffic lights ten years ago. There was Literally. all yeah, there's always those people. Yeah. No change. Did you get to keep any of your tactical marine stuff after? Did you take home any punching? I wasn't supposed to, but yeah. I, we did keep some uh, cool stuff. Talk about it if you don't want <laughs> Yeah. No, I'll talk about it. I don't care. I don't know if I think there's probably a statute of Come limitations. Come and take it. <laughs> is there a statute of limitations on uh, international weapons tr- transfer? I don't know. So you have to talk to <laughs> Interpol <laughs> about that. Ask yeah. Oliver North, maybe. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, be- guys were taking guns back and stuff. Yeah. A friend of yours may or may not have taken something. <laughs> yeah, I ended up with an AK for a little while. Belongs in a museum. Yeah, I I, <laughs> I got scared and sold it to a gangbanger. Oh, there you go. So it's yeah. out there. He's keeping the streets safe for yeah. you, and right, Warren. <laughs> no, that's California. It's not my yeah. problem anymore. Yeah, that's 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 fast and furious out there. 
<laughs> uh, you ever notice how when you start a new job, it takes 90 days to get insurance? But that's also the honeymoon period for like a new couple. It's like three months and you start fighting. Yeah. So you can start a new job, start banging the secretary, and then get insurance just in time for her to scratch your eyes out for your first fight. <laughs> Hey, that's it's good. The timing lines up. Just make sure you get vision. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Full vision and dental. <laughs> and dental, just yeah. in case. For her, too. Just in case. Right. Something, something might happen to her, too. Yeah. <laughs> Equal yeah, rights and lefts. That's like the, uh, how you get, your credit replaces itself in seven years. Everything falls off your credit report after seven years. I hope that's true. But that's because every seven years, every cell in your body replaces itself. So you're a different guy. Ah. You'd be like, that was him. I'm I wonder, not, has that ever been argued in court? That's a great... <laughs> yeah. Like, Your Honor, that wasn't even me. I didn't rack that dead up. That was... That other asshole... I've replaced him. I've upgraded myself yeah. now. <laughs> <laughs> My daughter was asking me if I knew what pansexual was. Oh, and I was yeah. like, this is a guy that fucks lost boys on an island. <laughs> Peter Pan. <laughs> sexual. I think that's what Captain Hook was. <laughs> <laughs> that was the hook. Yeah. Yeah. On, on Facebook, uh, how I had some family mem- distant family member come out as pansexual on Facebook and Whenever my dad was reading it, he was like, what does that mean? They have sex with animals? Yeah. <laughs> Pansexual just means that like you'll have sex with anything. Yeah, right? any body. You ever <laughs> notice it's not ever like a really attractive person? No. Yeah. It's, it's, it's like a, swingers. It's always somebody know? with no options. Yeah. yeah. So now it's yeah. every option. Yeah. It's like, yeah. oh, I'm very forward thinking. It's like, yeah. no, nah, you just don't have options. I've broadened my horizons because yeah. I can't get it from where it, I was It's supposed the to opposite of another person I knew who um, was incredibly unlucky in love and decided just to come out as asexual yeah it's mm-hmm. like the opposite of pansexual you can't like, fire yeah. me i quit yes yeah, yeah that's what it <laughs> yeah, was yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. A, you can't fire me i quit situation right it's not that i can't get laid it's that i won't yeah it's that i just don't even have that in me yeah okay so i've got a daughter that's uh getting into the mid to late teens and you said you've got uh young ladies over there that are getting older I had a, all my friends are telling me, you know, the things that are going to happen to my daughter because of what I deserve from growing up. Oh, yeah, no, that <laughs> that better not be true. I had a girl's dad tell me when I was 16, I took her out on a date. Second, she didn't, he didn't know about the first date. We had to sneak. So the second date, he was like, whatever you do to my daughter, I'm going to do to you. So <laughs> I was like, well, I already, we already went out. So you're going to take me to a movie I don't want to see. Right. You're gonna buy me dinner and pay for all of it. I would not even gonna let me hold your hand. I would have been like, "Well, guess what? I just sucked her dick." <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <Whatever>. <laughs> Get to work, Dad. Yeah, you want to see a lady's balls? <laughs> <laughs> I have a new thing I'm doing. So I worked. I work for. I can't say where I work, but I I worked in uh, traffic control before. CIA. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> We used to ride around on, in trucks putting out cones for marathons and stuff. Okay. And when you would see a, a woodland person or an elf going through the trash, everybody in the car would go, slow down, slow down, roll the window down. And I was like, what? what's going on? Am I being hazed? What's happening? And we slowed down and pull up next to the guy in the garbage, and the guy would yell at the, the, door, the window, get out of there! And he would <laughs> jump three feet in the air. <laughs> so it turned into, you know, as they're more and more homeless come to Austin, it's got even more and more fun because they're in the dumpsters and they're in the woods. It does sound like fun. Just yell, get out of there, Adam. We should do that after this. We should go homeless <laughs> hollering. Well, let's go. We, got we have this. to do that in the woods now. <laughs> get out of there! <laughs> <laughs> that was what was so special about the homeless in Austin was that our city council decided, hey, you guys can just camp out on the sidewalks everywhere. Yeah. And that's that that got pretty bad around COVID, right? Yeah. It was in the middle of COVID that we voted to bring back the camping ban. So that was something special about us that we had under every single overpass. We had tent cities I think you for can solve that by just uh, – organizing at real avid campers yeah yeah be like you know what let's bring our rvs and park on the str- on the sidewalk you said we could camp yeah. anywhere you yeah know, just like, show them the ridiculousness of it i like your idea of having an app and saying for five dollars we can get one homeless person off the street yeah and then they'll, they'll be gone somehow <laughs> don't yeah. worry about how they're gone that was I used to have a I used to have a, a joke format called statuses I can't post on social media like things I can't say right and one of them was like just to post on Facebook man we really need a final solution for Austin's homeless problem oh damn yeah. <laughs> well Israel told Palestine stop being there you had to move stop being there and they wouldn't move and they asked them over and over again to stop being there and they wouldn't move so then they 
uh, made them unalive to them. Yeah. That was the solution. <laughs> if you stop telling somebody to be a place enough times, eventually you're just going to say stop being, period. Yeah. Yeah. You need to just not exist anymore. But I don't know where to where to put them all. I don't know where they came from. I think they're all the dirtbag flipnotics hippies from. You should make their families take them back. <laughs> yeah. Go. Don't you have a mommy? Yeah. Or a son? <laughs> go live at your son's. Go be his problem, not ours. I don't know. I heard there's a big trash island in the middle of the Pacific made of floating plastic. Yeah. They could go there. There is, but it's not bothering anybody. They can get stem Let cell surgery out there, out there and yeah. everything. Yeah. Oh, make them live on the trash yeah. island? <laughs> That's funny. It's like load-bearing that. to a yeah. certain degree. <laughs> so my new thing of yelling at people now, because I have to commute and I hate it and I'm bored, is if it's not a homeless guy in the trash now, if I see somebody with their dog going to the bathroom, I'll slow down and roll the window down and pull up like an autistic 10-year-old and be like, Ew, poop! Yeah. <laughs> That's gross! <laughs> Sir, that's yucky. Just a way to entertain yourself. Because they're already all like nervous and weird with the dog. Yeah, they're just, already very vulnerable. Like, make sure you wipe him. They're about as vulnerable. <laughs> You're not as even going to wipe the dog, <laughs> sir. Where's your green bags? You don't wipe your dog. Where's Ew. your finger gloves? Ew. Ew. <laughs> <laughs> you ever? How was breakfast? Did you enjoy breakfast? Breakfast was good. You ever uh, have a bad meal and end up talking to your stomach like a horse? Like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, well, we'll Sometimes, yeah. Sometimes. <laughs> Donnie yeah. and I have been Not walking. Not today. It was good. We've been walking a lot, trying to lose weight. And depending on when's the last time I've eaten, there's only a certain distance I can get from the house before I'm like, I'm going to have to head back before oh, I yeah. start talking to it. Yeah, yeah. the older you hey, get. Whoa. <laughs> the whoa, older you Nelly. get, the shorter your walks are. Simmer down yeah. there. <laughs> or you have to like map it out so that there's bathrooms yeah, you along you the way. You just have to time it right. You just have yeah. to take some planning. <laughs> just a little bit a, of discipline. Good for a third of a mile. Yeah. Oh, trust me. Driving a, a truck, I know where all the best bathrooms in Austin are. Oh, yeah. I it's bet. It's in an office park. The bathroom is like a fucking spa. Oh, yeah. yeah. Each cubicle has its own ac duct and drywall and a locking knob i know where all those are some of the best bathrooms are like department stores like a dillard's or yeah. a, a macy's yeah the domain i was in one of those and i heard an old guy talking to his dick he's trying to pee he couldn't pee yeah and i he didn't know i was in the stall so i guess he didn't do the customary yeah. look for feet and he went to the urinal and i was completely silent i i probably fucked up i should have done that <clears throat> yeah type I forgot. Scoot your feet or something. I was probably looking at my phone or something. But he starts going, come on, little buddy. Come on, you can do it. Let's do it. Come on. <laughs> Got to get back to work. Let's get this done. And then he finally started peeing, and he's like, ah, yeah, there you go. That's good. <laughs> and I really wanted to be like, you did it, buddy. Yeah, yeah. good job. <laughs> start clapping. Just start talking and giving him prostate advice. We've pulled together, so you, and we've made it happen. You should really go get checked, sir. It should be easier than this. I don't know if you noticed in the bathroom in there, there's a sign that says, you pooping. Yeah, I did. Uh, I like that. So that's that's an inside joke with me and my brother. Uh, you one pooping? day, One day during the during South by Southwest, uh, we were like out. You know, During the day, you can go just drink everywhere for free half the time, and we were in this bar. And we were sitting at the bar drinking, and I was like, oh, I got to go to the bathroom. So I went to the bathroom, peed. And came back to the bar. But I came back a slightly different way that went around the other side of the restaurant. And my brother wasn't there anymore. So I was sitting at the bar drinking. And then he walks up and he sees me. And he has this just absolute panicked look on his face. So apparently what happened is I went to the restroom, peed real fast, and left. And he didn't see me walking out of the bathroom and passing him as he went to the bathroom. So he walked in, saw that there was somebody in the stall, thought that it was me, and goes, You pooping? <laughs> So some poor person was taking a crap in the stall and had a random stranger walk in and <laughs> ask them if they're pooping. <laughs> you pooping? <laughs> so that's become our inside joke. And so he got little signs made for our whole family to put in all of our bathrooms that says, you pooping. I liked it. Yeah. It was a very cute bathroom yeah. sign. We got one. All right. Well, one let, our house. let's uh, take a little break here and uh, we'll be right back. I feel like unattractive people are the ones still wearing the mask. Yeah. <laughs> like they they don't really care about the disease. They're just like I I'm, I get more dates this way, you know. I think they were trying to kill white entitlement because you get a lot of opportunities from smiling and shaking hands with other gentlemen. <laughs> right. You couldn't do that anymore. Couldn't get a job, couldn't uh -huh. get nothing. No <laughs> At least shit, you can still right? look at them in the eye. Can't shake. Hands. <laughs> yeah. Hey, we're no back with the God gospel, gospel hour. 
So we had a previous guest on here that asked us if we ever noticed that uh, there are no women mass shooters. Oh, they're all men. Yeah. And I was like, what? Well, you got to get out of bed first to shoot anybody. <laughs> right. <laughs> women don't shoot too many people, though. There's probably women mass poisoners. Yeah. yeah. Women. Well, there was, uh, there's, They've there's done... been several of those angel of death type nurses yeah. oh, that yeah. will just you know kill patients and stuff. Oh, yeah. There's been mass passive aggressiveness. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm a month older than my wife, so that during that month, I love to rub it in her face that I'm a year older than her at that time. Right. And I'm, she know, should respect her elders. Everything that happens, I'm like, you'll understand when you're 46. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But my new favorite one is because they ask the guy to do the vows first when you get married and then the girl. I'm the relationship expert because I've been married for 30 seconds longer than Ew, she Oh, I like that. <laughs> I said that. I do. You didn't say I do until after. Hopefully she's not watching right so now. So I know everything about marriage. What do you think about the uh, submarine situation? Man, that's a weird thing, that? isn't it? Submarine. So these guys all paid like how much? What? How much did they pay? Like a hundred thousand? Yeah, it was like up? six figures to go down to the Titanic. Right. They should have just paid James Cameron. He already did it five times. I was looking yeah. at some pictures of that thing, and it was not made well. I know. So apparently, you can just throw together a submarine and then say, "Hey." Give me five hundred thousand yeah. dollars, and then they'll just do it, and you yeah. go down there. Are they in trouble? Yeah. Like, are they going to have to pay a lot of money to the families of these people, or do they just did they just make a lot of money? I think the guy is really good with legal loop- loopholes. That's how they were able to embark in the international first place. waters. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, good for him. Yeah, I guess. So. I'm, hey, I'm all well, for I think, capitalism. I think the guy who's most responsible for it was in the sub. So, I think what good everybody luck. should learn is that wherever there's not air, that's none of our business. <laughs> Yeah. Right, you know, under the water, in space, yeah. the ghost realms. <laughs> if there's not air, the humans aren't qualified to go fuck around. Yeah, I, I don't understand what was supposed to be so cool about going to see the Titanic at the mm-hmm. bottom of the Brave. ocean. Brave, I'm an explorer. Like no, it, you're dumb. It's covered in barnacles. And, there's no yeah. breathing. If there's no breathing there, right? I need breathing. We don't. <laughs> I need that. There. Where's? Is, do they have breathing in the first class section? That's the first like, thing you asked us when we invited you on the show. Do you guys have air? Yeah. Need to, I need to be able it, to have. It's <laughs> in my rider. <laughs> yeah. I want the green M and M's. Yeah. And oxygen. No. Yep. The uh, president keeps falling over, so I'm working on a bit about you know when you hit your head, they ask you who the president is. <laughs> so if he gets inaugurated again, he'll probably fall over, and they'll be like, "Who's the president?" And he's like, "I'm oh, Shirley Temple." Barack Obama. <laughs> you know he's going to say Barack Obama. <laughs> what's the what's the what's the president's? Yeah, we were talking about our uh, like you know our kind of how everything's so scattered politically these days. There are so many n- funny little clips of Biden trying to say a sentence <laughs> that yeah. just make you laugh, but you can only see those on like conservative pro Trump twitter people you can't see that it, like i don't see anybody who's on the left saying ha look at joe biden trying to talk well he's trying to dead name trump he won't yeah. say trump yeah so he always says because of the problems of the previous administration yeah, but right. he really trips over all that yeah. 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 The problems of the previous. i don't yeah. see any pro biden stuff from the left either though like there's not a yeah. whole lot of like montages of him saying anything right or well, like doing awesome things well for things. the for a while it, it was them trying to meme him as dark brandon yeah which dark brandon is the same thing as let's go brandon yeah for about three weeks it was funny right yeah and then the people who really aren't good at memes or aren't really that funny just drive it into the ground so the dark brandon was funny for a while where what it was is like dark brandon i never, i didn't know that it one. was like whenever he Deep had State. some like legislative success or something like they started making these memes of him with like laser eyes like dark brandon got it done haha you know it's one of those kind of like mm. oh you, you trump people are memeing about trump being the god emperor well this is our god emperor and it's dark brandon um and you know for a while it was kind of funny you just, know, but it, then eventually the people, you know, just gets run into the ground. Stick. Yeah, yeah, it didn't stick. It, there was a there's a there's a half life on comedy. Yeah. You I know? thought they were calling him Dark Brandon because he shits his pants. Yeah, it's <laughs> a dark spot, Brandon. <laughs> actually, I just that's a little brown spot. Oh, yeah. skid mark, Brandon. <laughs> yeah. There was a bunch of pro Biden stickers on all the gas pumps when the prices went back down, and it still said, "I did that." Yeah, yeah. It <laughs> turned from anti Biden to pro Biden. It's funny how when you change a number, yeah, all those people know. have to go take their stickers off when yeah. the gas prices went back down. God damn it! Yeah, yeah. I, was, I remember it was probably two or three months into the Biden administration where I was like, "Wait a minute, who's president again?" Yeah. It was it was actually pretty nice not really hearing about the president every single day in the latest outrage. I was like you got hit on the head. Yeah, I used to do a bit about when he was vice president. Yeah, 
uh, just about how nobody knows who he was. He, like was he, a, he was pretty under the radar as vice president. He yeah. was America's comfort safety friend when you bring another person on a date. Nobody didn't want everybody to be scared of a Barack Obama. So like, let's put this old George Washington looking ass yeah. motherfucker in there. This guy who's been around for 50 years. The Onion, the the best part of Biden being vice president was the stuff The Onion did because they basically made him like kind of like a, a white trash good old boy. Like he... Um, washing his dodge charger in the white house lawn or he you know he's got he's got a bunch of uh, copper wire he's got to unload it was a bunch of those kind of stories they called him diamond joe biden yeah that was when that was when like he's I got a sawzall him. and he's cutting off catalytic converters yeah <laughs> in the Just, parking uh, lot of the white house <laughs> he should have kept those aviators on because he's always squinting yeah that's probably why we're not getting along with asia right now because every time he goes over there they think he's making fun of them <laughs> Like, what's he doing with his eyes? <laughs> Cut it out, asshole. Put your aviators back on. I'm like, oh, yeah. Dude, I thought George W. Bush squinted, man. Then Biden yeah. is like, his yeah. eyes are freaking closed, He's man. stoned, man. He's on all them weird pills. Yeah. That's what the they last debate him was. Running, yeah. Between him and Trump, it was just two old guys fighting about who gets the... Uh, so whose coke do you think that was? Yeah. <clears throat> well, I Somebody immediately started posting Monica, Hunter Biden memes. Monica Lewinsky. <laughs> yeah, Monica. She's snorting it off Clinton's dick. Clinton's penis yeah, it stuck around. Yeah, no, nah, I don't think she would have left any. <laughs> she, she did, she, she's a good yeah. Hoover. Yeah, I think she was good at <laughs> sucking stuff up. Thank you for your cervix. <laughs> so here's something weird that my wife does, and I'm wondering if everyone else's wife does this. In the morning, on the weekends, she's extremely affectionate, but, and I don't understand why until I realize she's trying to get me to go get tacos. Oh, yes. Everybody's an asshole in the morning when they wake up. You know, yeah. it's the, your first instinct is to be like, fuck you, get the fuck out of my head, eh, turn the lights off. Yeah. But she's she starts acting real nice, and I'm like, well, you, worry, you want me to go to Arandinas, or do you want me to go to uh, meet mommies? What kind of, you want potato, egg, and cheese, right? And you want a bacon, you want me to get the right, kids? You know what she wants. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, yeah, I'll go. Just That's the thing. Women don't even want you to ask. Yeah. <clears throat> they want you to just know. Yeah. You know, like the, women are famous for being like, for saying things like, if you don't know, then that's half the problem. Yeah. Like, if you don't know why I'm mad. Yeah. It's like, well, no, it doesn't work. Communicate. <laughs> Use your words. No, we get into that with restaurants. She asked me where I want to <clears throat> eat, and she already has somewhere in mind. And at one time recently, I guessed the same place she was thinking of, and she was like, that's so romantic. I knew you were thinking the same thing. And I'm like, I don't want to play this game, though. And yeah. I don't even want to go out to eat with you anymore. Yeah, yeah. No, I just guessed <laughs> lucky this so time. Annoying. It's not romantic. This is what we've been doing for 15 years, and it finally took me 15 years to guess right, and now it's romantic. I you think know? that's what the notebook originally was, just yeah. him trying to keep track of what she likes. Yeah. yeah. We went to uh, San Francisco last March. To, yeah, two marches ago. And we saw all the uh, tankers in the bay full of shipping containers. Yeah. And my dad was like, oh, it's a supply chain issue. But what you hear about those is that it's there's people in them sometimes. Yeah. You know? And they're still there. Oh, yeah. So that's like people they're, soup now. There's yeah, a whole season hot. of The Wire about that. Yeah. <laughs> and that's what that's why there's no... Uh, it's the evergreen containers. That's yeah. what they say. That's why the sex trafficking industry has been backed up because of supply chain issues. I it's, know. Yeah, it's dude. not that nobody <laughs> wants to work anymore. It's that there's nobody to work. I've had a sex slave on back order for three <laughs> months. God <laughs> damn it. It's like <laughs> Kickstarter. You pay for the thing and it's not there yeah. yet. <laughs> another paying. Kickstarter delay. Ugh. Well, yeah, another thing about marrying into a Southern family is there's a lot of common courtesy stuff that is not common to me being from the East Coast. Oh, yeah. Like waiting for... Everybody to sit down before you eat yeah, or say grace or all this other. There's a lot of polite stuff. You know, we can't show up at anyone else's house without bringing something. And all me and all yep. my buddies are, you know, East Coast Kevin Smith dirtbag type, you know, pop by. Hey, what's up? I'm at your door. Let's hang out. Yeah. Uh, what's in your fridge <laughs> type of thing. <laughs> yeah. So it's a strange adjustment to be, you know, married with kids and have everybody. Well, we can't go over there. We got to make potato salad first. <laughs> And we, they can't come over here because the house isn't clean. I'm like, these are my asshole buddies from back in the day. They can come pop by. It's fine. Yeah. There's I a lot of stuff that people think is common courtesy that's not necessarily common. That's true. I figured that out. I, I used to drive a truck for a little while. Hmm. And I drove up into like the Midwest, like Wisconsin. Yeah. And uh, I was just, they were just not friendly. Yeah. You know, I was like, hey, I'm here to deliver this thing. And they're like, okay. Yeah. 
I'm like, yeah, you know, I'm trying to make conversation. Yeah, I just drove all the way in from Texas. Sign you, here. You knew I was I'm coming. Like, you hey, didn't make potato salad. Yeah, or? where's the? You didn't make sweet tea. <laughs> <laughs> supposed to have uh sanka and, and intamins ready just in case somebody pops by like i tried your cheese curds they suck yeah so is vet tv involved at all with the adam driver thing have you heard of his thing he's got a thing for acting for vets i don't think so for yeah. comedy who's that i don't know who that he's is kylo ren from star wars he's uh how he's uh oh. he's an he's actor now. yeah he's a vet but he's also an actor and okay. he's okay he has a bunch of organizations that he's involved with that are like for Adam him. Driver? Yeah. I'll have to check him out. Yeah, maybe we can link him up with Vent TV. You probably, you probably see him. No. That's what he looks like. You, oh, he's, yeah. He's been in movies. You know, I don't know about that. But Vet TV is a really cool uh, platform for veterans. It's made by veterans for veterans. Fubu. And it's, yeah. <laughs> Fubu. <laughs> it's the British Fubu. Or not, it's the Latin Fubu. F V B V. Yeah. For veterans. Yeah, but no, it's really it's really great. They got a lot of great uh, programs on there and comedy, uh, just really dark stuff, you know. Because in the military and in the veteran community, we're we're known for our dark humor, yeah. just because that's how we get through some of these yeah. crazy situations. It's yeah. just by laughing our way through it. It's like when cops find a body in the river, they're like, "We got a floater." Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. You gotta gotta be able to whistle through the graveyard. We were talking over breakfast about kids looking up stuff on the internet. Yeah, and uh, my son's first time seeing ass was this old biker lady that we know. <laughs> she burnt herself, her hip on the some part of the bike trying to fix it. Oh, and we were just hanging out in this grandparents' kitchen, and she was like, "Look here, look what happened!" And she pulled her whole pants down, and her whole ass was out. And my son was like nine, and he was like, looked horrified. And I was like, <laughs> "That's the first live ass he ever oh, saw." No. This seventy-year-old <laughs> no. burnt biker lady. <laughs> you have to have a talk with him later. Yeah, no. Like, hey, son, it gets better. It's like better. The, <laughs> yeah, but. Yeah, it's, it gets better. Talk. But speaking of Kim Kardashian, I'm sure he can figure it out that, that there's better ass out there, right, in the world. <laughs> we had my parents visiting for dinner, and uh, they're you know a lot more conservative than we are. And uh, my daughter spilled something. And my wife always tells the kids the number one rule of the house is everything's washable. It's not a big deal. If, so if you spill or something breaks, we can clean it up. Don't cry over spilled milk cup type of thing. Mm, okay. But my main rule of the house is don't fuck with mom. That's what I always yeah. tell them. Do not fuck with mom. You're going to make everybody have a bad day. She controls the vibe in the house. I see you fucking with mom, and so don't be surprised if a lot of more shit goes wrong around here. There's not going to be no dinner. You're not going to have no clean clothes. Nothing. <laughs> Everything's going to come to a screeching halt if you fuck with mom. So we're having dinner with my parents. My daughter spilled something. She goes, oh, no. And my wife goes, it's okay. What's the number one rule of the house? And she goes, don't fuck with mom. No way. <laughs> <laughs> my parents were like, ugh. And I was like, well, she's ready for junior high now, yeah. I guess. <laughs> I don't know if my parents had a number one rule. But uh, from my dad, I heard quite a bit, uh, sorry, don't fix it. Yeah, I, I like that one. Yeah, I like that one. Like a you'd lot, spill actually. and be like, "Sorry, sorry, don't fix it. Clean it up." <laughs> okay, it's very God of War. Do not be sorry. Be yeah. better. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Do better. Do yeah, you guys no. have a lot of family private jokes that like, you don't say? Like when I was growing up, they were like, "This is family talk. Don't talk about this outside the house." If we made any kind of inappropriate humor, and you know, the "Don't fuck with mom" was probably family talk, and I didn't. Oh, tell them. <laughs> yeah. You know, I don't. I try to have stuff like that, but kids today don't understand how to keep secrets. Yeah. Like, they're not scared of us. Yeah. <laughs> right. You know? Like, there was no CPS when I was a kid. Yeah. <laughs> or if there was, we didn't know about it. I told my dad that. He was like, those are the good old days. Yeah. Yeah, they and are. They were. My kids were bad, and I was like, what did you do when we did this kind of stuff? And he was like, you guys are just good. I remember my dad threatening to kill me, and yeah. I believed him. <laughs> yeah. You know? He would say, I'm going to tear you limb from limb. And I'd be like, what does that mean? He's like, I'm going to tear your arms off and your legs. Yeah. And I was like, holy crap. Have you seen Star Wars? You know what Chewbacca does when he loses a chest? Yeah. So I'm going to pull your arms off. Yeah. And now I like I try to threaten my son. I'm like, you do that, I'll kill you. He's like, then you'll go to prison. I'm like, yeah. well, yeah. <laughs> Good. Gladly. I'm not scared of jail. No, I'll go back, motherfucker. Calls my bluff, and I'll call CPS. <laughs> I'm like, you call CPS, you'll be dead before they get here. Yeah. yeah. Call an ambulance too. Call the hearse and CPS. I'll unalive you. If I'm gonna, if I'm gonna get caught, I'm gonna make it count. Yeah. 
So one thing I noticed about moving to Texas is people talk a little slower down here. Other people say the same thing. Yes, and I've heard that. Not a laziness thing. I think it's has to do with having built all of this, and now you can rest Enjoy on your it, loyal yeah. laurels. You know, like you bush hogged your whole all your acres of land, so yeah. now you can go fishing in the in the in the fishing hole. You still got a fishing hole out there? Uh, not on my property. But okay. Yeah. But you've earned the right to sneak onto the neighbor's property and fish in his there pond. You go. <laughs> <laughs> Outrun the bull. Yeah. But yeah, it's yeah. it's not laziness so much as just we just take our time. We made it here and we've done it and we're now we're in enjoying a mint julep on the porch. Right. So you can get to catch up with this pace. I like that a lot better. Yeah. I mean, I guess just because I grew up with it. Yeah. But, you know, I've been to the East Coast where people are like, ah, blah, 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 It's like, what, dude? Slow down. Like, yeah. Is what you're saying even valuable? We're very quick. My son was born uh, a month early. I always tell everybody he came early, just like Dad. <laughs> <laughs> Come from, I was telling my dad about, uh, we were bitching about flying and stuff. And he was saying something about the stewardess. And my mom was like, they're not called stewardesses anymore. And I was like, yeah, dad. And he was like, oh, okay. Air broads. Air broads. <laughs> <laughs> I would watch a movie called Air broads. <laughs> <laughs> call them whatever you want. I call them air broads. Oh, broads. What a great word. Does your wife God, ever help it. you write jokes or give you any material? Yes, actually. My wife's very, very funny. Yeah. It's a lot of the reason why I started dating her and why I married her. Yeah. Great sense of humor, which is very rare Yeah. Uh, f- to me. Yeah, because I'm pretty conservative in my views of like uh, women aren't funny yeah. <laughs> normally. <laughs> yeah, terrible very, storytellers. Very traditional usually. views. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like I've got uh, just over a thousand viewers uh, or uh, followers on my f- TikTok. Yeah, she has fifty thousand. Okay, and she's not even a comedian. She just gets on there and tells stories about her day. She's a, a home health nurse. Yeah. Oh yeah. She tells these stories. They're hilarious. She's yeah. a great storyteller. Okay. Yeah. You gotta give me those. She's like my best friend. The links, I'll have to look at that. My wife helped me write this one. We were talking about how they keep adding stuff to the LGB thing. Yeah. So she's like, until they figured out, they should just call it LGTBD. Yeah. <laughs> to <laughs> be determined. Yeah. <laughs> just take the, eventually it's going to be the whole alphabet. Yeah. yeah. And then we're going to go and start going into like other language characters and <laughs> <Yeah>. emojis. <laughs> yeah. Latin. <laughs> I worked with this guy named uh, Jimmy Bohack. Uh, we were on this crew together, and he would take these long cigarette breaks and smoke Pall Mall. So, he yeah, gave us all a break because he was the lead on the crew. So, because he was old and a smoker, he was the only old fat smoker I've ever seen. There's <laughs> yeah. not a lot of old right. fat hanging in there. Usually gone. Yeah, but he would, you know, we'd pull up downtown in the middle of a couple projects. You know, well, we're gonna take a break here in the shade. And he told me a story about how he became a police officer. He has a lot of old cop stories. Oh, from yeah. Luling. He was the sheriff's deputy in Luling. He said they used to get $4 a head to put Mexicans in a van and just send them down to the border. Like a deport, uh, informal deportation. Oh, yeah? You get a bonus check. $4 nice. per head. If you find, $4 per head. You find one in the 70s, you just put them in this van and they take them. Damn. It's a taking homeless to Austin situation. In the 70s? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I wonder how many legal citizens they made go to mexico how many people got 12 years of slave? <laughs> right because they didn't have a lot of documentation yeah, just because they hadn't gotten their driver's license yet didn't have their little <laughs> piece of paper on them yeah. <laughs> but he said uh when he was 17 he wanted to be a in the banditos he thought that was cool you know oh yeah he grew up with james dean and rebel without a cause and all he wanted to be in the motorcycle gang mm-hmm. so he was having thanksgiving with his family and his uncle who was a cop said what do you want to be when you grow up jimmy and he said, oh, I'm going to be in a gang. I got my, I'm to, about to buy a motorcycle. I got my little strap here. I got my pistol. I'm going to be in a, in a bandito. And his uncle said, well, that doesn't sound like a very good idea. Let's go and have a beer. Now you're 17. You can drink. Back then he could drink with like a guardian. Mm-hmm. So they went to this podunk beer shack and they sat at the bar and his uncle said, I'll make you a bet. Let's go outside and fight. And if I win, you can I can join you up on the force tomorrow. And if you win, you can drive a goddamn clown car for all I care. Do whatever the hell you want. Being a gay bike gang or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> 
And he was like, Uncle, you know, I love you, and I don't want to hurt you. And I'm, I'm getting ready to be in this bike gang now. So oh, I'm real tough. I'd hate for oh, yeah. something to happen. And he said, well, let's go outside and smoke a cigarette. So they went outside and smoked a cigarette. And he said, all right, uh, let's figure out what, what you're going to do with your life. You ready, boy? And he took a swing at his uncle. And his uncle dodged and, and hit him in his ear. And he said his head started ringing. Mm -hmm. And he got real upset. And then he came at his uncle. And he said his uncle worked him over like a buzzsaw. Hell like yeah. it was a wood shop. He just <laughs> destroyed him. He woke up the next morning in his bed with a busted lip. Blood coming out of his ear. Busted nose. Black eye. His mother came in his room and said, Jimmy, what happened? And he said, I'm going to be a police officer. <laughs> and he told her what happened. And she was like... Your uncle never told you that he's the Golden Gloves boxing champion of the Marines? Oops. <laughs> he beat the Golden Gloves boxing champion of the Army and the Navy Damn. to become the Golden Block Gold Gloves champion. He's like, no, I didn't know that. <laughs> I guess I'm going to be a police officer. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> With half of my lip falling off for now. All right, we're going to take one more break, and we'll be back. All right, we're back. Segment three on the god awful gospel hour. So did you go to college anywhere? I did a little bit of college here and there. Same. I went to three different colleges, didn't yeah. finish. Yeah. <laughs> you don't need to finish. No. I went to most of it. I went to graphic design school. Same. Really? Communications one oh one. I was yeah. I did communications one oh one and all of that. And uh I almost graduated. I mean I got nine tenths of it done. And then as soon as we finished school, none of it applied anymore. Because nobody needs Quark Express or Page. Well, you know, <laughs> I just didn't that? see the point. You know, inst well, I had an opportunity to, to go overseas and entertain the troops. Yeah. So I did that instead of turning in my final uh, project. But you're my age. In high school, we had like drafting and technical drawing. They don't do any of that anymore. It's yeah. all AutoCAD. Oh, yeah. So everything that we learned is obsolete almost immediately, like right after we graduated college, I guess. For me, 95, I, high school, U96, then we yeah. would, have, would have graduated college 2000. That was when Yeah, they didn't have to worry about Y2K. I did it much anymore. later, much okay. later, though. I was like in my late 30s. Do you still mess around with any of that stuff? A little bit. Yeah. Same. You know, my mom was like, why, don't you, why didn't you just finish and get your diploma? Yeah. And I was like, well, I just finished graphic design school. I'm pretty sure I can make a diploma. Yeah. You know? <laughs> They're not going to check. I can, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I can draft me up something. I, I went to college, and I majored in Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2. Yeah. Uh, I missed all my classes because I played too much Tony Hawk. By the way, that's one of my friend's jokes. That's Sean Halpin's oh, nice. joke. Yeah. Okay. I went to college in Southern Virginia, and uh, just most of it was spent visiting my friends at their colleges because I was down a couple hours from Blacksburg where Tech was. A lot of friends went to Virginia Tech. Mm-hmm. And uh, we were having a party, <clears throat> my friend's house. It was like a frat house, but it was for indie art dirt bags. So I didn't have an official Epsilon designation. It was just a shitty house on the corner. Yeah. But we didn't have enough people at our party. And we wanted to get more people to come to the party. So we drove around, took mushrooms, drove around, listened to George Michael, Freedom, and Delight, Groove is in the Heart, over and over again, and Ooh. stole traffic cones. And then rerouted traffic so everybody had to come to our party. Good, clean fun right there. Yeah. And then I got in the front yard, and this girl was like, I bet if you blow this bourbon over that tiki torch, it'll make a fireball. And to my fucked up ass, I heard, if you can blow a fireball over this tiki torch, you're going to get your dick sucked. Mm. So you just like, heard blow. I have, to, <laughs> I have to blow a fireball over this thing. So I tried it with the brandy. It didn't work. Mm -hmm. And then I thought, well, what about that stuff that's in the Tiki Torch? Of course, that's flammable, whatever Dude. that stuff is. And they were like, no, don't put that in your mouth. That's bad. It's like wax or something. Yeah. But then the guy who lived in the house was like, oh, I got a whole can full of gasoline for the lawnmower in the shed. You could do that. Because no, I heard didn't. there was people that do that trick where you put gasoline on your hand and light it and you can kind of hold it and it doesn't burn your skin. Yeah. It just burns I the gas. I think that's probably like rubbing alcohol or yeah. something a little. Something quick. Yeah. So I had a measuring cup a lower flash point. full of gasoline, and I took a mouthful of it and blew it over this tiki torch. It made an awesome fireball. Yeah. And then I backed up, and my face was on fire. Yeah. And then, so stop, drop, yeah. and roll, right? 
but I still had a half <clears throat> cup of gasoline in my hand. Dude. So I dropped that in the lawn and rolled in it. So I'm in hell. <laughs> <basically>. Yes. <laughs> so I run inside. Oh my God. Everybody's like, go inside, get hose yourself off. And uh, so I ran inside, ran upstairs, the only bathroom. I got in the tub and just like washed and blow jobbed a piece of soap and was trying to get all this gasoline out. And I hear all this pounding on the stairs, boom, boom, boom. And everybody's coming upstairs. And I'm like, oh no, the house is on fire. We got to get out of here. I get out of the tub and I'm like, oh. and my best friend is like, the photo. <laughs> So beautiful. You got a picture? <laughs> yeah. Nice. It's like a Polaroid. And somebody yeah. used it for an art project of like how to do things right and how to do things wrong. So they had like a flame throwing, blowing guy from the circus. Right. Doing it right. Next to me. <laughs> You're the example. Yeah. yeah. And then you rolling around on fire. So he yeah. got an A. That was good for him. The I wrong guess. way. Yeah. But I didn't get permanent damage. I'm That's perfect. That's amazing. I know. I'm, you're telling the story. I'm looking at you. I'm like, he doesn't look disfigured. He's got all his hair. Yeah. <clears throat> Have you ever been in trouble with the law? Have you ever been locked up or anything? Oh, yeah. A couple of times. Stuff that you want to I'm on probation about. right now. Oh, hell yeah. Where's your ankle bracelet? Uh, I'm not, not, <laughs> it's not that serious. I got a, D, a DWI. Okay. Uh, about a year, a little over a year ago. I'm almost done. Is, that's a COVID DWI just about, right? Yeah. I, I know a couple of people have gotten some of those. Yeah. Cops yeah. didn't have much to do. There wasn't anybody out. Donnie got arrested for drugs at Coachella. Now I got I got um I spent four hours in a federal holding cell in Sierra Blanca, Texas. Oh nice. So you know that um Border Patrol checkpoint that's just on this side of El Paso? Yeah. Where they get everybody. Mm -hmm. Um we were coming back with just a tiny little bit of weed from Coachella and uh we're going through like real early in the morning and the drug dogs supposedly alerted on our car and they dragged us all into a holding cell for four hours and we waited for the sheriff to come. Um, just write a ticket. That was what that was all it ended up being. But we got arrested at four twenty in the morning on four twenty <laughs> twenty ten. Nice. So Bro. appropriate. Yeah. Six by a sixty nine year old cop. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was the first time I was in any type of jail situation. Yeah. Second time is I got a DWI. This has been twelve years ago or so now here in Austin. So I got to do the whole Austin the whole Austin thing with because uh, they are crazy about catching drunk drivers here what they you will hear now you. is it costs like 20 grand to get out of it yeah for me it was four but i also got it ex uh, got it dismissed or or deferred because i actually blew below the legal limit which is a, a fun thing that they can still <laughs> arrest you for when you blow below the legal limit i hate that a bitch yeah and i shouldn't know you know they tell you you're not supposed to blow you really shouldn't do it you got fedex here but I was like, I don't I really refused. care. Yeah, I refused I was like, to blow. Well, I was, I was no, no just in weekend. such a such a good mood because I was buzzed that I was like, ah, I just want to see how drunk I am. Yeah. And I blew, and it was behind, it was below the limit. And then my lawyer told me, uh, you that was like the one percent of cases where blowing actually helped you. Yeah. Because yeah, it got because it was like point oh seven six or something. Wow. And I was like, that's below the limit. And they're like, well, we're still arresting you. So they should have hold up a tiki torch and see if you could blow a fireball. And yeah. <laughs> how alcoholic your breath really was. Right. Right. Yeah. I blew twice the limit. Nice. I was, nice. I was hammered for real. <laughs> I was like, good job, you guys. You got me. They got, they put you on the wall like a, the cheese factory. This guy ate the most burgers. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> they gave you a t-shirt. Yeah. I got busted in North Carolina for possession of paraphernalia with intent to ingest. We were on our way to a beach rave in Outer Banks, and I was driving, helping the DJ and his girlfriend. I was doing the lights for this beach rave. We had to ferry people back and forth Yeah, across the sand to where the actual rave was at. So we had a lot of shit in the, in the coffin in the back, in the, in the turntables, the mm. pills and everything. And he got pulled over for running a stop sign in the middle of the night. And uh, while they were booking him, we took the car around the corner to this tiny ass town in North Carolina and threw everything in the garbage and came back. And we we're just waiting on him to get to find out what the bail was and get him out. And the cop came back and said, uh, the, our canine unit alerted the, the trunk of your vehicle. We'd like to search it. And we were like, yeah, fuck you. There's nothing in there because we knew we had emptied anything. Mm. And then he brought in my shoulder bag. It was one of those gay, weird sh messenger bags from the late 90s, early, like yeah. all the pockets. It's like that Jan Galifianakis? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So he was like, the, the dog alerted this bag. Can we search it? And I was like, yeah, fuck you. There's nothing in there. They found a bowl, a ceramic bowl from a previous trip to Philly that mm. my buddy had put in a strange pocket that I didn't know about, like all the way down in the bottom. So... He pulls this bowl out, 
and he puts his pinky nail in there and it comes out black and he goes resin uh possession of paraphernalia with intent to ingest uh, luckily i had a job at the time with uh legal assistance so i had to drive back down to north carolina twice from dc area and uh paid my lawyer 300 bucks he said it was gonna be 300 bucks then he took my 300 bucks and went in a room with the judge and the bailiff and came back out without my 300 bucks and i was like i could have just paid the cops 300 bucks <laughs> yeah, no kidding. The day of, and I had to drive four hours down here to Outer Banks two more times. Could have done it like in Mexico. Yeah. You pay the fine right now to the cop. Oh, yeah. yeah. I've been there, too. <laughs> oh, yeah. Can we just skip the whole fake shit? <clears throat> we had uh, halfway through junior or high school, but both of my best friends, skateboarders, they moved out of town. My one buddy... We were like the, we fancied ourselves to be like the DC Beastie Boys. Like we made beats and skateboarded, but we were mm-hmm. in DC. And so one of them moved to Delaware. The other one went down to Blacksburg for college. And I was still a junior, and uh, I got pulled out of high school because I was using high school as a networking group for raves. You know, we didn't have cell phones, so it took six periods of high school to talk to the right people to get the party going for the mm-hmm. weekend. Who's going to drive? Who's going to lie to their parents? Whose parents are going to lie and say we're sleeping over there? Lights. Right. Turntables, records, DJ, everything. It was all, this all happened in Baltimore. That's why I don't watch The Wire because I already know Baltimore sucks. I don't need to <laughs> watch a show about it. But uh, I had some friends. I quit hanging out with my raver buddies. They moved away. So I just started being friends with these kids from youth group and they were lacrosse players from the next high school over. But then they didn't have a hookup. So they're like, Josh, you don't know anybody? And I was like, I know somebody downtown behind the Capitol. And they're like, no, we don't go behind the Capitol because all your parents tell you when you're little, don't go behind the Capitol. Mm. And I was like, that's the uh, that's it's good back there. That's where you get stuff. Uh, we have to go behind the Capitol. So we went to my friend's studio. I had made him a sign, a neon sign that said Fresh Beats Daily on the window that flashed smoke. And uh, he referred us to his weed dealer who was on 14th Street, downtown, southeast D.C. And uh, he was on the phone with him. And he said, okay, okay, I'll tell him, okay. And then me and my three lacrosse buddies from Virginia went to go meet his weed dealer. But on the way out the door, the DJ, the guy at the studio, boom, was like, Josh, stay in the car when you get there. So I took these guys to this townhome in the bad part of D.C. They go in. They're in there for a long time. They come out, they're very chatter, chattery, chatterboxy. They're very verbal. They, 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 they. they got in the car, we're leaving, and he, they're both, they're all yelling in my ear the whole way home. And I find out that uh, the dealer had the weed. They gave him the money. He put a pistol on the table and said, Yeah, I want y'all to try some of this here crack first before you go. Oh, no. So they all three of them had to try crack <clears throat> before they were allowed to <laughs> buy weed and leave. And I was dating the drill He's team. He's like forcing you just because yeah. he knows you're going to get hooked. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. So the, it's a, training, knew, a very training day situation. Yeah. He knew me through the yeah. studio guy through Boom. So he said, don't let Josh come in and get hooked on crack because he's our <laughs> friend. So let's keep him safe. So I got oh, to stay wow. in the car and not get hooked on crack. So these guys knew where the house was. Without me, they started going back to getting in more and more trouble downtown. But there's a VHS tape of a lacrosse match of Herndon High School versus Reston High School in Virginia, and the score was 62 to zero because they destroyed this other team because they were all on crack. Damn. <laughs> and the, the announcer is on the microphone. I've never seen lacrosse played like this in my entire life. <laughs> These guys are the most precise shots I've ever seen. I can't believe this is a record break. This is going in the Guinness World Book of World Records. Wow. So crack is a performance enhancing drug yeah. for lacrosse. Yeah. <laughs> Who would have known? And my girlfriend at Does the it time last for a whole lacrosse match. <laughs> Are they having to re up in the at halftime? Yeah. yeah. Mm. Well, my girlfriend at the time was the leader of the the drill team captain, and she was like, "What did you do to those guys?" And I was like, "I don't know what you're talking about." And it, it became slang from then on. That anybody in that high school that did something stupid, everybody's like, "Are you on crack?" Yeah. <laughs> but it was like, yeah, quite possibly. <laughs> you pooping? <laughs> yeah, you pooping. <laughs> well, that was good. Yeah. Everybody had a good time on the show? Was it god awful enough for you? Yeah. <laughs> it certainly was. We didn't get into any gospel. We've been we keep saying we need to start talking about religion and 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 the, the good book and all that on the on the podcast, but maybe we'll have a, a whole a whole episode. Maybe we'll have a Bible study episode. Yeah. 
Yeah. We have a bit we're working on about how nobody knows where the spirit or the soul is in the body, but also nobody knows where girls squirt from, if it's pee or not. Yeah. So the girls might they might be squirting from their spirit. It might be their spirit. It's a yeah. transcendental experience. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> or it's probably just pee. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, one of our last guests said, uh, if you think it's pee, you've never made it happen. Yeah. Or you just have a dirty bitch pissing on you. Yeah, you've made bad life so, yeah. decisions. It yeah. doesn't taste like pee. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's that's kind of what he said. <laughs> well, right. Thanks yeah. for coming on. We really appreciate you. you. Hopefully thanks we'll for having you me. again next time you're in town. Yeah, you're at the, at the mothership this week. You, you, that's uh, right. Probably going to be back, I'm sure. Oh, yeah. So oh, yeah. you're live. So everybody go to the mothership if you're in Austin tonight. Yeah. yeah. Go to the mothership in Austin. Comedy mothership, Austin, Texas. I'm on two shows tomorrow night, uh, 7 o'clock. I'm on a fundraiser show for uh, veterans with PTSD. Mm -hmm. I'll be on the lineup with Ron White, Tony Hinchcliffe, and Brian Simpson nice. tonight. That's great. And then uh, the late show, I think, starts at around 10. I'll be doing Bottom of the Barrel with Brian Simpson. Cool. I hope you get some footage or some recordings out of that. Yeah. yeah, they don't allow it. But. Uh, okay. So what are your socials? What, do you, what are, What's your at? Do they have, even have ats at TikTok? I guess they do, right? Yeah, they do. It's yeah. at uh, Eric Knowles Comedy on TikTok. Eric Knowles Comedy. Eric right. with a K. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, yeah, whatever. I think it's Eric Knowles Comedy on all the platforms. So whatever just, your favorite platform is. Just Google. Yeah. You're the only reason TikTok was worth a damn to me after putting work <laughs> into it. I was like, oh, there's a real person on here. Yeah. <laughs> the first time I... <laughs> is that how we connected? It wasn't was from it Rahaj TikTok? Jajaj. It was, was through like, TikTok. Yeah. on Austin, Texas vibes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Are you a robot comedian? Yeah. <laughs> I responded back to your message, and, uh, and then you responded back, and I was like, whoa. It's like being on the Oh, hand. yeah. It's when that uh, my special came out. I was... I kind of sent out a bunch of those messages yeah. to like, hey, help me promote this. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you were that a real person. Out. Well, th yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Signing off. All right. All right. Thanks, Bye. guys.